Hi there, I'm Alex Jones and today I'm here to tell you about Ruffini's corpuscle. If you haven't heard of it before, it's sometimes called Ruffini's ending or even a bulbous corpuscle. If you still don't know it, then that's great, you're in the right place to find out. So let's begin at the beginning, late 1800s Italy. A histologist by the name of Angelo Ruffini is staining samples with gold chloride and looking down his microscope. On the slides, he spots an encapsulated nerve ending. He studies them and then shares these slides and papers on the nerve endings with his friend, Sir Charles Sherrington. Sir Sherrington, in turn, helps Ruffini's papers be published in the Journal of Physiology. In his research, Ruffini discovers that these corpuscles are a type of mechanoreceptor. But what is a mechanoreceptor? Well, there are four main kinds of mechanoreceptors in mammals. There's Pacini's corpuscles, Meisner's corpuscles, and Merkel's nerve endings. And then, of course, we have Ruffini's corpuscles. These are then further divided into two more types. They have a few names. Rapidly adapting or phasic mechanoreceptors, sometimes known as type 1 and slowly adapting or tonic mechanoreceptors, sometimes also known as type 2. As it's the most descriptive, I'm going to use the terms rapidly or slowly adapting, just to keep things simple. Mechanoreceptors, put simply, are sensory cells that respond to pressure. Think touch or vibration, and they're each specific to a type of pressure. Bacinian and Meisner's corpuscles are rapidly adapting mechanoreceptors. They respond instantly to stimuli, but as quick as it was there, it's gone again. Merkel's nerve endings and Ruffini's corpuscles are slowly adapting mechanoreceptors. The nerve endings keep firing for as long as the stimulus is present. So what kind of stimulus do Ruffini's corpuscles respond to and how exactly do they respond? Ruffini's endings detect stretch in the skin deformation or movement in the joints, and also warmth. This is really important for controlling how we grip onto objects and the position and movement of our fingers. If you play any sort of instrument, enjoy video games, like to text, or even know how to write with a pencil, then you're using your Ruffini's endings. These nerve endings are found in our skin, between the dermis and the epidermis layer, mostly in the hands and fingertips. Since we're a little lower down in the dermis layer than the nerve endings that detect cold, we often detect cold before we feel warmth. Let's take a look at this nerve ending. We know from our earlier description that Ruffini's corpuscle is encapsulated. This means that the nerve ending has a natural covering or capsule made from fibroblasts. The fibroblasts secrete collagen proteins that help Ruffini's corpuscle to maintain its structure. It's small and elongated and made of a single branching sensory fibre. The collagen fibres of the capsule cover the cell longitudinally. That way, the cells can compress the nerve endings for as long as the stimulus is detected. So we know that they detect touch, movement and warmth and how they do that. Great. But what are they doing with this information? Luckily, I made a flowchart. First, we have our stimulus. Let's go with holding a cup, something most of us do. The receptors, in this case Ruffini's corpuscle, detect this stimulus. It transmits this information to the central nervous system and then to the brain. The brain, in return, sends a message back through the central nervous system. It tells the hand to hold the cup and how tight. We are mostly unaware of this exchange. We know we're holding the cup and how tightly we're holding the cup. But the exchange is so fast, we don't even know it happened. So that's Ruffini's corpuscle. We know who discovered it and when, that it's a mechanoreceptor and what that means, what it looks like and how it detects stimuli, how it does that and what it does with that information.